It is exactly 2.30 p.m. on April 14, 2021. We are returning to other people's money and how the bankers use it by Louis D. Brandeis. Day two. Five lines up from the bottom of page 170. A banker's paradise. Kuhn, Loeb, and company were the Union Pacific bankers. It was in pursuance of a promise which Mr. Jacob H. Schiff, the senior partner, had given pending the reorganization that Mr. Harriman first became a member of the executive committee in 1897. Thereafter, combinations grew and crumbled, and there were vicissitudes and stock speculations. But the investment bankers prospered amazingly, and financial concentration proceeded without abatement. The bankers and their associates received the commission's pay for purchasing the stocks which the Supreme Court holds to have been acquired illegally and have retained them. The bankers received commissions for underwriting the securities issued to raise the money with which to buy the stocks which the Supreme Court holds to have been illegally acquired and have retained them. The bankers received commissions paid for floating securities of the uncontrolled companies. Excuse me of the controlled companies, while they were thus controlled in violation of law, and have, of course, retained them. Finally, when, after years, a decree is entered to end the illegal combination, these same bankers are on hand to perform the services of undertaker and receive further commissions for their banker aid in enabling the law-breaking corporation to end its wrongdoing and to comply with the decree of the Supreme Court. And yet throughout nearly all this long period, both before and after Mr. Harriman's death, two partners in Kuhn, Loeb and Company were directors or members of the executive committee of the Union Pacific, and as such must be deemed responsible with others for the illegal acts. Indeed, these bankers have not only received commissions for the underwritings of transactions accomplished, though illegal, they have received commissions also for merely agreeing to underwrite a great transaction which the authorities would not permit to be accomplished. A $126 million underwriting, that single commitment on the part of bankers, to which J.P. Morgan and Company refer as being called for by the Attorney General's approval of the Union Pacific Settlement, never became effective because the Public Service Commission of California refused to approve the terms of settlement. But, dot, dot, dot. Now, we're on day two, and what I've noticed is what was actually observable earlier when there was the illegal lien placed upon me for an understanding of performance of somebody else's obligation. The second one had a problem. There had already been an effort to script it beforehand, including in manners that inverted or rather even swapped out what was actually literally the facts as they are reflected on the written record. We're holding on day two. This could have potentially many implications. We still have not finished this particular reading. Just so you know, my understanding is that especially based upon what occurred yesterday, the Attorney General did not approve. Who would say the Attorney General approved if the Attorney General did not, in fact, approve? Two thirty-four p.m., April 14th, 2021. 